Hey guys, it's Jesse here from Tonkadale, and today we're making an evergreen pot. In honor of my 10,000th squat of the year, we're doing squat pots today. This is in place of our traditional treetop pot design, but I wanted to show you how to do it in case you want to get in on the squat action too. You can do regular squats, sumo squats, you can do air squats, you can do squat kicks, Let's go shopping. We're gonna grab the 10 pound bundle of Norway pine. Norway pine is so sturdy. It stays green all season long. So it's always fresh for your doorstep. 10 pound bundle. Hope that's enough. Now we're gonna move over here. The next element I love the most is the shore pine. Sure pine is just a little bit more sticky uppy and rigid, so that'll help frame it out real good. I'm gonna grab three bundles, but I feel like you could do it with two. And then we gotta get some of that Dougie fur. This is our Douglas fur. Fur is flat, flat on the back. I think we can do it with one, but I'm gonna grab two just in case, or you could do one Douglas and one silver because we love that pretty silver on the back side. So we get one Douglas and two silver. Ooh. It smells, oh, it smells so good. And then we have two bundles of magnolia. Could do one, but I, oh, you gotta have two. We have so many other greens available. This time of year, we have the incense cedar, the berry juniper. Oh, I think that was a, a jab cross. Okay. And our gorgeous drapey cordorford cedar. Your favorite and mine, the oregonia. We'll put some of that in here. We're pretty much there. Let's get started. Just don't forget the conage. We almost forgot the berries and twigs. Berries and twigs. We almost forgot our berries and twigs. We have a 12 inch pot filled to the top with rice hulls. And rice hulls, what are they? They're the hull of rice. They're a byproduct of the rice industry, and we're able to use them in the summer as a soil amendment and as our pot filler for spruce tops and squat pots. However, word to the wise, those barges coming up the Mississippi running behind this year, so we will not have rice hulls available for sale. So what is a spruce top pot stuffer supposed to do? Well, you know what? I'm gonna go back to the good old days when we used to use potting soil. The Tonka Terra potting soil is a nice, rich, heavy soil that holds lots of moisture. It's sticking up when it's wet to hold those greens in place. And then once they freed solid, you're good to go. Now, one thing I always make us do before we get started is take the pledge. We'll be watering our spruce top, comma, squat pots until they free solid. Because just like cut flowers, they're taking up water so they, so they stay nice and turgid and fresh. Say it with me. I will water my spruce top, comma, squat pots until they free solid. Thank you, you passed. All right, so we have our pot full up to the top, just like a cup of brown sugar. Let's talk about the tools. I have a pruner. Pruners are for trimming things that were once living and now not. A hand-sized pruner gets through things that are about a half an inch in diameter and smaller. Now for those big daddy spruce tops, you're gonna to wanna to use something like a lopper. We have a wire cutter. Wire cutters are for wired stems. So a lot of the, our, many of the permanent stems are wired, so you need to cut them down to size. We'll do that with a wire cutter. Scissors. Now scissors are for ribbon only, so those be the tools. I have a couple other things we'll talk about along the way and save it for the grand finale, we'll stop. Let's clear the deck and make way for the greens. All right, we have our 10 pound bundle of Norway pine. We're gonna release the beast. All right, so for everything that was once living and now not, it gets a fresh cut so that again, it can take up water until it freezes solid. Here we go. I like to cut my Norway pine into reasonable sized branches or fronds. Pick off the whiskers, fresh cut. 
Now, the Norway pine is gonna build out our shape and our structure, and the angle of insertion is very important. So we're going to have some kind of in at this angle, then we're gonna just give it a little crank. We'll have some at this angle, and we might even have some that are straight up and downy. You're going to build kind of a three ring circus here. That's what it's all about. All right, I think I framed it out nicely. Doesn't that be perfect? We can keep editing and um, BTW, I only use about one half of that 10 pound bundle. So one 10 pound bundle of Norway pine gets you two squat pots. All right, next we're gonna do shore pine for some sticky uppy actions. I like to save the longer pieces for the center and then just kind of continue to fill out the shape, making sure it's loose enough so I can see where all the points are, but make sure it's full enough so I don't see holes in the construction. So we can kind of go up, down, up, down, up, down, all the way around. All right, let's go in for bundle number two. go with the two bundles of shore pine. We do have one more if we need to edit. It's coming with the Dougie fir. Douglas fir is a great one for framing out hanging baskets because it's lighter weight, nice and airy. It won't weigh down those baskets. This is a generous chunk. We can get lots, lots of cuts out of this one. You just kind of look for the natural breaks. Sometimes if you look in the backside because it's nice and flat, you can see where to cut. Again, going out and up, depending on the height of the stem. Let's do one more bundle of silver fur. All right. I feel like we have this framed out really well. It's nice and solid, it's sturdy. And making sure those greens are all stuffed it in there nice and tight, really great for the construction and engineering of the pot so that when a big wind comes along, everything stays nice and tight. At this point in the process, all of our greens have been assembled, save for maybe a few edits at the end. We're gonna spray the entire pot with wilt stop to keep the moisture in and ensure freshness long into the new year. This is Wilt Stop, it's a natural pine resin. And what it does is it just kind of seals in all of that moisture. I do like to decorate pretty traditionally. I think pretty simple with bold, bright colors is the way to go. That way your pots will be seen far and wide. Keep going with our sticks. This is a bundle of 10 Cardinal Dogwood. Cardinal Dogwood has a little bit more of a pinky tone versus your traditional red twig dogwood, which will give you a little bit more burgundy. Now we want to, we're gonna put these straight up the middle. So we'll need to decide how tall we want our pot to be. I will, I'm gonna give these a bit of a trim. Just kind of guess. And then I did leave one zip tie on the bunch. So it'll allow for efficient shoving. Look at that. And then I usually just press on a few individual stems, make sure they are inserted in the soil. Then when they freeze solid, they're not going anywhere. That looks pretty good. Next, 
Next, we'll do this gorgeous magnolia with that beautiful fuzzy leaf. At this point, you want to think about where your pot may be seen. Is it just from the front? Is it sitting in a corner? If so, you don't have to decorate all the way around, but I'm, I'm going to because obviously my pot is going to be seen from all angles. And again, we're going to go in a bit sideways like we did with the silver fir. The magnolia will dry down and kind of have a dried, wilted appearance after a few days out in the elements, but that's okay. We like that dried out look. These are permanent berries that are suitable for outdoors, so they can be used year after year. Whoop! Hiya! Then we have our pine cones on a stick. Why would we stop here? We have Oregonia. Oregonia adds just a lot of lightness and brightness. So what I like to do is, you know, find where the natural breaks are, give it some snips, make myself kind of a little bouquet. All right, so that's my squat pot. Should we add a bow? All right, because you made me, we'll make a bow. <laughs> I picked this juicy red plaid, it picks up the brown with the pine cones and the magnolia. All right, so spruce top pot bows are real simple. You're going to allow for maybe 12 to 18 inches of tail. And then we're gonna make loops. Loop up. Ribbon face pointing down. We gotta bring it back up. The ribbon facing up, we gotta bring it back down. The ribbon facing down, we gotta bring it back up. The ribbon pointing up, we gotta bring it back down. And tail. All right, I have my top. I have my taped floral wires. You can grab these in the store. We'll go right around the, right around the middle. These taped wires are like the shapewear of bows. They like grip real nice and tight and just pull it all together. Give everybody a little floof and poof. There you have a bow. Now you might ask, how, how do I put that in my pot? Well, friends, we're gonna put it on a stick. So I have a stick here. You could use like a bamboo plant stick. This is happens to be what's called a hyacinth stick. You could just wire it on. You could zip tie it on with baby zip ties. I'm gonna do the professional method and tape it on with floral tape. Floral tape is kind of fun because as you pull down, it grips. And our favorite finishing touch, the double fold hem. All right, who's up for a squat challenge? Thanks for watching and we'll see you at Tonkale.